Hey guys, uh, today we are going to talk about the divisions of the nervous system. It's a very important introduction lesson before moving on and learning about other parts of the nervous system such as the brain, the spinal cord, the nerves etc. So this is presented by me Kaushik Chari. I'm presently studying my MBBS from AIMS and uh, for you can follow me on an academy using this uh, link. So the nervous system is mainly divided into two main divisions as we all of us know the central nervous system which is abbreviated as the CNS and I will refer to it as CNS from now onwards and the peripheral nervous system which is abbreviated as the PNS and I will refer it to the PNS from now onwards. So the central nervous system is like a central processing unit of your computer uh, which processes all the information and the peripheral nervous system is the uh, numerous wires that is connected to it which gets information to it and takes information from it so it is like the commanding center the central nervous system is the commanding center and it gets all its input from the peripheral nervous system and sends all its outputs from the peripheral nervous to the peripheral nervous system so uh, the nerves that carry impulses from the uh, peripheral nervous system or the periphery the organs the organs, uh, the nerves that carry impulses from the organs to the central nervous system are called the afferent nerves and the nerves that bring information from the central nervous system to the peripheral organs are called the efferent nerves. So the peripheral nervous system has either two types of nerves which either which carry the uh, information from the organs to the brain which are the afferents and from the brain to the organs which are the efferents and the nerves can either be of somatic or autonomic type so you need to know what is somatic and what is autonomic so in your body the two types of uh, functions that occur one that is voluntarily the by your own action and the other which is involuntarily which happens without your notice the involuntary actions include digestion breathing breathing is most part in unconsciously done it is not under your control uh, and the heart rate heartbeat etc so these are functions which are not done under your conscious or voluntary control so these are referred to the autonomic functions where are the somatic somatic refers to which control voluntary actions mainly movement of your hands skeletal muscles these are the voluntary functions so the nerves that uh, that take part in somatic functions are known as the somatic nerves and the autonomic functions is taken care of by the autonomic nerves so both the somatic and autonomic nerves are divisions of the uh, peripheral nervous system so till now if you see the divisions of the nervous system it includes the central and the peripheral CNS and PNS and the peripheral nervous system can further be divided into the somatic and the autonomic so till now we have divided from nervous system into central and peripheral and peripheral into autonomic and somatic moving on what complicates it further is that the autonomic nervous system is still further divided into sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. So these two terms are very important to know. Sympathetic nervous system is also called the thoracolumbar outflow and the parasympathetic nervous system is also called the craniosacral outflow. So basically you should remember that these peripheral nerves come out from the spinal cord and the spinal cord has four segments as you have learned in your uh, locomotory system that the vertebra has four four main divisions uh, the cervical the thoracic the lumbar and the sacral the same way even the spinal cord has four divisions the thoracic the lumbar the spine uh, the, uh, uh, the the cervical thoracic lumbar and sacral so the cervical thoracic lumbar and sacral so the sympathetic nervous system mainly the nerves of the sympathetic nervous system originate from the thorax and the lumbar regions of the spinal cord so that's why they're called the thoracolumbar outflow and the parasympathetic nerves mainly come from the cranial or the cervical part and and the sacral part so it is called the craniosacral outflow so the nerves mainly the sympathetic nervous system is called the thoracolumbar outflow the parasympathetic nervous system is called the craniosacral outflow these are the two things that you new terms you must remember because they're asked in mcq straightforward the thoracolumbar outflow is the sympathetic nervous system something like that so the differences between the sympathetic and the parasympathetic is something that you should know uh, the sympathetic nervous system is basically prepares the body for the flight or fight response basically you when you when you 
step onto the stage to give a speech or a lecture you will notice that your heart beat increases you can actually feel your heart beating in your chest and you have a sense of anxiety alertness increase a decreased salivation and sweating you you have a dry mouth these are all symptoms of uh, these are all basically because of activation of the sympathetic nervous system and sympathetic nervous system releases a substance called adrenaline which primarily leads to all of these symptoms so it is very important to note down and memorize the what the sympathetic nervous system does to your body it increases alertness it leads to dilation of pupils it increases the blood glucose it's obvious why does it increase the dil- uh, pupil size so that you see more light and you can see it, see everything more clearly it increases blood glucose why because to increase the energy during the fight or flight response it decreases salivation sweating gut motility and urination because these are vegetative functions that do, that are not required at this point of time why do you need to digest when you want to run away from a predator or there's a fight or flight response why do you need all of this you don't need them so that's why they shut off and this increased energy consumption obviously the body wants to use more, all of its energy sources to give you a fight or flight response and you also have an increased heart rate and blood pressure as well this increases blood perfusion to the peripheral organs the parasympathetic nervous system it is general function it just reverses whatever the sympathetic does as you can see it constricts the pupil decreases blood glucose increases sweating salivation increases the vegetative functions basically increases digestion it normalizes the heart rate and bp so basically it it maintains body in homeostasis and maintains the body's rest and digest response so increased gut motility feeling of urination so all the vegetative functions increase the blood glucose is conserved this decreased use of blood glucose is decrease in its utilization so everything just normalizes with parasympathetic nervous system so basically yeah one more point i want to stress upon is that when you have a sympathetic activation immediately after that you start feeling thirsty your heart rate comes down and uh, these are all symptoms because th- just after the activation of sympathetic you have the normalization by the parasympathetic nervous system so main function of parasympathetic is to normalize what the sympathetic nervous system has increased so the final flow chart the central nervous system the peripheral nervous system the nerves that bring information to and take information from the central nervous system may come are mainly the peripheral nerves no, constitute the peripheral nervous system the sensory division and the motor division the afferent nerves which get information to the central nervous system and the efferent nerves which take information from the central nervous system when we have the autonomic nervous system or the somatic nervous system somatic nervous system mainly you know, um, takes impulses to the skeletal muscles whereas the autonomic nervous system has two divisions the sympathetic and the parasympathetic so the autonomic nervous system mainly controls visceral movements which visceral motor uh, movements which are not under your control and it has two divisions the sympathetic and the parasympathetic so on in a broad sense this is what you must take uh, this is the take home lesson from this uh, chapter that the central now uh, you have the nervous system which is divided into central and peripheral the peripheral is divided into somatic and autonomic the autonomic is divided into the sympathetic and parasympathetic and there are mainly two types of nerves in the nervous system the afferent or the efferent nerves the afferent nerves take information to the central nervous system and the efferent nerve take commands from the central nervous system and relay them to the periphery so these this is the main take home message from this lesson that and this uh, the main nervous system is divided into these divisions which is very important in understanding the further concepts about the brain the spinal cord and so on and so forth so that's it for this lesson and thank you for watching